Hi everyone, in this video I'll show how to backup and restore your computer with RescueZilla without using a USB drive. RescueZilla is free open source imaging software that will allow you to backup and restore your computer. Normally you'll need a DVD or USB drive to boot RescueZilla, but I'll be doing this without either. So I'm going to download RescueZilla, going to rescuezilla.com, and then going to download, and I'm going to download the latest version. After downloading, open up your downloads folder, and here's my file, and I'm going to mount it. So hit enter or right click and mount, open, and we see it mounted, and now I'm going to open up disk management, start disk management. All right, and on my computer I have disk zero. This is my internal SSD. This is where I have Windows installed, and I'll be backing up my entire SSD. And disk one is my NVMe drive. And this is where I'll be storing my backup. And then there is CD-ROM zero. This is where I mounted RescueZilla and it's on the E drive. So I'm gonna be backing up disk zero here and I'm gonna to check to see how much space it's using. So the EFI partition is using 100 megabytes. The C drive, right click, go to properties. It's using about 80 gigs, cancel. And then there's the recovery partition, 522 megabytes. So roughly about 80 gigabytes in total on my SSD. Now, ideally, I like to have twice as much free space or at least one and a half times that much on my second disk to store my backup. So 160 gigabytes or at least 120 gigabytes. Now, when the backup is done, it will not use this total amount, but it's to be safe when RescueZilla performs its backup operations. When finished, the backup size will most likely be less than 80 gigabytes. And if you don't have that amount of free space available, the backup will just stall and you'll see that it won't progress any further. So on my disk one here, I'll be putting the backup on my D drive data and the free space there is 164 gigabytes available. So more than enough free space. Now I've mounted the RescueZilla ISO, but this is only available in Windows. So in order to boot from it, I'll have to make it available during boot. So I'll be creating a new partition on disk one here, and so I can boot from it. So I'll be using some free space from the D drive, right click, shrink volume. And so the RescueZilla ISO here, it's using about 1.4 gigabytes. So I'll put in 1500 megabytes, shrink, and then I'm gonna select the unallocate space, right click, new simple volume, next, next, next. File system will be FAT32, and then the volume label, we'll label it as RescueZilla, next, finish. All right, and it has been created. I'm gonna go back into Explorer, I'm going to copy everything from the E drive. I'm going to go into the new F drive and paste. All right, everything's copied over. Going back into disk management. Now, when your computer starts up, it should be able to see this partition here and be able to boot from it. But if not, it may be because it's not seen as an EFI system partition. So to do that, I'll be changing it from a basic data partition to an EFI system partition. So I'm going to open up disk part, start, disk part, run as administrator, yes, type in list disk to list my disks, and then it's going to be disk one, select disk one, and then I'm going to type in list part, show all my partitions, and then so it's partition number two, the 1500 megabyte partition, I'm going to select it, select partition two, and then now I'm going to type in help set ID. And I'm going to scroll up. And I'm going to look for the EFI system partition value in hex. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to type in set ID equals and then paste. Enter. All right, we can see that's been successfully set. And we can also see that it's set here as well. And now I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. In your BIOS, ensure that secure boot is disabled. And if you have fast boot, disable it as well. And now I'm going to do a one-time boot 
into the installation partition. It's labeled as UFI OS. And how I can confirm that? Go back into Windows, open up a command prompt as administrator, type in bcd edit space forward slash enum space firmware. And at the bottom, you can see that there's device partition F, the F drive that was created, and the description UFI OS. So I'm going to select it. All right, it starts up and it's asking to select their language. Enter, start RescueZilla. All right, and we get the welcome screen here and it's asking to select an option. So I'm gonna be backing up my computer, backup. All right, and step one, select drive to backup. And it's my first disk here. It's the one with uh, Windows. So I'm gonna be selecting it and then hit next. And it's asking the partitions to save and select which partitions to create a backup of. Leave all partitions selected if you are unsure. So I'm gonna be backing up everything. So I'm gonna be selecting all the partitions. So next. And here, step three, select your destination drive. Where would you like to save the image? So where I'm gonna put the backup. So it's gonna be connected directly to my computer, yeah. And it's asking to select the partition where the image files will be saved to. So in Windows, it would be seen as my D drive, my data drive. So it would be partition number one here. And if you want, you can scroll down and you can show hidden devices. This is for advanced users. But if you want to see everything, then you can select this. And then we can see here that dev SDA, which is my SSD drive. And these would be the four partitions that I would be backing up. So this is the EFI partition for Windows. This is a reserved partition for Microsoft. This would be my C drive here. And this partition here is the recovery partition. And then here's my NVMe drive. This is my data drive. And then this has RescueZilla. And so I'm gonna be storing the backup on my NVMe drive on partition number one or my data drive. And I'm gonna hit next. So it's asking to select a destination folder I'm just gonna be storing it on the root so I have no other folders. So I'm gonna just hit next. And it's asking you here to name your backup. So I'll just call this SSD backup. And then you can provide a short description. And then next. And then here it's asking you to select the compression format. So it's using gzip by default. And then there's Z standard bzip2 and uncompressed. So I would keep it the default gzip. And here it's asking you the compression level, the fastest or the best. So if you want the best, then it would compress the best and it would reduce the file size as much as possible. Whereas fastest, it won't compress it as well and then it'll have a greater file size. So if you're not sure, you can always just leave it as a default, which was six and then next. This is a summary screen. Step seven, confirm the backup configuration. So I'll confirm the following backup configuration. So I'm gonna be backing up my source drive, which is drive one. And it's gonna be backing up these four partitions, all of the partitions on it. And I'm gonna be using compression, gzip, compression level six. And it's gonna be backing up the image onto my second disk. And then at the bottom here, it says rescue, ignore file system inconsistencies and bad sectors. I would leave this unchecked. And then when ready, hit next. And now it's gonna back up my computer and this will take some time depending on the speed of your computer and the amount of data. All right, the backup saved successfully. So it's completed and then hit next. And now I'm gonna verify my backup. So go to verify image. All right, and select the image location. So it was on my NVMe drive on my data partition, partition number one. And then next. All right, and there's my image here. So I'm gonna select it and then hit next to begin verification. And now it's gonna verify it. All right, verification has completed. And here it gives the summary. And so the partition table file is present. SDA1, my EFI partition was successful. SDA2 is the Microsoft reserved partition which was about 16 megabytes in size. And it says verifying raw DD images not yet supported. 
so I'm not too concerned about it. And SDA3, which is my C drive, and the file system image successfully verified, so that's good. And SDA4 is my Windows recovery partition, so that was successful as well. So verification looks good. I'm going to go to next. And now to do a restore, I'm just going to hit restore and select the image location. So now it's my NVMe drive and then hit next. All right, and it's found the backup that I took. Select it, next. And so here it's asking to select the drive to restore. And it gives a number of devices here. And just to make it simpler, you can uncheck the show hidden devices. And so now it only shows my two drives. And so the destination will be my first disk. So I'm going to be restoring it here, next. And here it's asking to select partitions to restore. So select which partitions from the backup image to restore and whether to overwrite the partition table. Leave everything selected to completely restore the destination drive. So that's what I'm going to do. So all of the partitions are selected here and I'm going to be overwriting the partition table. So next. And this screen in here is asking for confirmation, confirm the restore configuration. And so there's my source image, the backup that I just took. And then I'm going to be restoring it on my first disk. And then it's going to be restoring everything. And then I'm going to hit next. Are you sure you want to restore the backup to dev SDA? Doing so will permanently overwrite data on this drive. Yes. All right, restoring your system from the image you selected. This may take an hour or more, depending on the speed of your computer and the amount of data. All right, the restore completed. And here it just gives a summary. And so here pretty much everything is successful. And it did not update Grub bootloader, if any, because I'm not using Grub. Hit next. And so I'm back at the welcome screen. And then I can hit the X to close it. And now I'm going to reboot my computer and go back into Windows. Log in. All right, I'm back in Windows. And going to open up Explorer and going to go into my D drive. And so here's the backup that I created. And if I go into it, and here are all the files. And if I go out, and I right click on it and I go to properties. And so the size is about 25, 26 gigabytes. And the original size was about 80 gigabytes. So I compressed it quite well. Cancel. And I'm going to go into disk management. And so my NVMe drive here, RescueZilla, I no longer need it. Now if I right click and we see delete volume is grayed out. So I'm going to remove it in disk part. Start disk part, run as administrator, yes. List my disk, select disk one, list my partitions, select partition two, the 1500 megabyte partition, and then type in delete partition override. All right, and it's been removed. Going back, and then I'm going to extend my D drive. Extend volume, next, next, finish. All right, and that's it. That's how you can back up and restore your computer with RescueZilla without using a USB drive. I hope this video was useful, and I thank you for watching. Bye now.